Okay, here's a job that I'm going to be doing for myself. I have one of these here Black & Decker band saws. <clears throat> a 9-inch benchtop band saw. Uh, I got for Christmas of 2009. And uh, <clears throat> I was using it today. And the uh, saw stopped working. And I found out that the uh, this is the bottom wheel for the bottom of the blade. And... Uh, the belt is really good for it. So what they it seems like what they how they designed this uh, bandsaw to work is that after so many years, instead of stalling your motor or breaking the belt, they give you the option instead to break the pulley. The cog pulley breaks. It has three uh, flanges here that screws on to the bottom pull the bottom wheel here for the blade thing. So what you it's a breakaway system to prevent you from having to keep on replacing belts all the time. So that's what I'm gonna to have to do is I'm gonna to have to uh build a new one and I'm gonna do it out of aluminum uh without the breakaway feature. And of course I'm being very sarcastic here about the breakaway feature. It's just that they made it out of plastic, and the plastic is just rotting away on these here little uh, things here that hold everything together. It's just rotting away. It's like a nylon plastic. It's falling apart here, and it just screws right onto the aluminum wheel. So, like I said, what I'm going to do is I'm going to make it out of aluminum, and I'm going to... Uh, make this work properly. Now I do need to add also that uh, I use this bandsaw only for my woodworking. I don't use it for metalworking so it's made and designed to uh, be used in woodworking and that's all I use it for. So it was not, so I did not misuse it or anything. It's just the way the thing is built, that's all. Okay, let's get on this part. Okay, I guess the first thing in order here would be to get a quick measurement of the height of this here. And that's one inch. One okay, about inch, a little over inch and eighth. I'll make about inch and uh, oh, about inch and a quarter. I'll look at to rough it down. So okay, I'll get the width of the cog itself. Get that width established. Okay, here's the setup I have right here. I have uh, a dog right here, and all I did was just uh, put a quarter twenty uh, bolt on one side here, and then on the other side here, and just tighten them in tight into the workpiece, and then just tighten down the uh, the clamp here, and then just have it on the dog right here. <clears throat> but whenever I cut this on a bandsaw, I didn't take my time, so it's a little bit wonky, as you can see. You see, it actually. Uh, pretty well it's high here and it starts getting real low here but anyway when I took a measurement of it it's uh, within the range that I need so I should be okay
Okay, I'm within an inch and uh, a little over an inch and a half, or two inch, two and a half inches. About two and five eighty. Uh, it looks like that's about an inch and a quarter to be comfortably holding that properly. <clears throat> so I'm just going to go ahead and turn this here down to about in this area here to about an inch and a quarter, and then I'll I'll switch that around and put that in my inside chucking jaws, and then I can machine everything from there then. Facing cuts now to go down to the full uh, diameter that I'm looking for. It's going to take so much here before it clogs up here a little bit. Nice and smooth now. Continue doing that until I get down to that inch and a quarter that I'm looking for. Final clean up on the shoulder. Okay, that should be working good now, so I can put that on my self centering uh, chuck and then machine the other side and then start machining the diameter, outside diameter, and all the different features that need to be machined on this now. I have a choice. I can take it back tight and register it on the flat here and have it run a little out of concentric or else I can zero that in with a dowel indicator. I'm not sure how I'm going to do this yet. 
but that spigot is going to fit nice there now. Now I have something solid. And then I can machine all the features down as need be to a rough outside diameter. I decided that I'm going to go flat back here so that I make the face of this parallel with this. It's going to be running this out of, out of the uh, concentric here, but that's okay because I've got plenty to work with to get it down to the final size. So what I'll do by doing this way here now, I can parallel the, the face of this with the face of that, and then I can start working down the diameter here to get everything concentric with each other. Okay, total indicator uh, run out is about 90 thousandths. It's about 90 thousandths. Now I have uh, 3 inches on the diameter here. I need to take it down to 2.45, uh, 2 and a half inches. So I got a half inch to work with. So if this is total indicated as 90, that means about 45 thousandths of an inch uh, from the, uh, the radius. So uh, that should be plenty to work with to get that down to proper uh, dimensions and have everything working concentric with each other once I get everything uh, machined down properly. That looks real good. It's all smooth now. So that's now parallel with the back side. Alright, next thing to do the diameter here. Now the outside diameter, get that down concentric to a rough uh, outside diameter and then we'll work from there. Okay, I see that's pretty concentric. Mm -hmm.
Okay, this here is roughed down to this diameter here for this piece. So now what I have to do is rough down this uh, this side here. Now this size, and I believe that uh, is about 1.62 inches of roughly, maybe inch and five eighths or so. And so I'll rough this down now to about an inch, maybe 800, 1.8 around there, maybe. And of course, <clears throat> by me doing the internal bore to final dimensions, and because it's already in the same setup, I can actually take this down to the final dimension for the outside turning as well, because it's all done in the same setting. So, so I don't have to put it on the arbor to get this down to finish this dimension on the outside. I can do both. I can get the finished dimension on the outside and the finished dimension on the inside, and have the piece completely done to finish size, and then make the arbor for the indexing. Six hundred and forty thou. A small shoulder right here, right here, that uh, is about a hundred, about a hundred and seventy-five thou. I have that marked off over here. I have a mark on here at a hundred and seventy-five thousandths off of this right here. When I come off of this, I come back a hundred seventy-five thou, and I have my uh, stop set for that. Now I also have this thickness here is a little bit thinner than this here. This here is sitting at about a hundred and or one inch six fifty, which is that shoulder we're talking about. But I need to to machine the actual cog wheel itself down to about one inch six eighteen. And so that's what I'm working on now. 
So what I, where I'm at right now is about 1 inch, 655. So I need to take this now down to a uh, finish dimension now to 1 inch, 6.18, uh, 6 and that's what I'm going to do now here. I'm going to take about 10 thousandths at a time here now and work my way down to it. Right down to my stop here. I think we need that 175,000 inch shoulder. Let's try it here and see what we got here. I want that shoulder to be around 170,000. Okay, still got ways to go here to get that stop. Just look a little bit smaller than I thought, but it's really not the line yet. Okay, right there, that's to my stalk. And I'll just keep on machining that down until I get to the final dimension. Let me just take a little quick, just a real quick measurement here. Just real quick here. Yep, that's where I'm at, pretty close to, to what I'm looking for there. So I'll keep on machining this here down now to get it to that 1.618. 1 and then machine this to uh, 1.55, I think it is. And then I'll be ready to do the boring for this. To bore the inside diameter will be next after this. Okay, about five thousand to go. Okay, about two thousand, so give you six point one. I'm at right now. I'm at one point six two. So then I'm gonna let it go at that for right now, and I'm gonna start working on the shoulder here a little bit now. Get that down to size, and then bring this back out this way. Okay, here, we, here we go with the dimensions now. We want this here at uh, three hundred and around seventy-five, three hundred and eighty. That will be the back flange here. Measure here. We're about three, three eighty-five. 10,000 is different, that's not bad. 385. We want the uh, back flange here to be about uh, 1.655 roughly. Come over here, the back flange here. About 1.655. Okay. And we want the, the cog itself to be about 1.618. 6.2. Roughly 1.62. And we got our 1.62 there. And we want the, uh, so if I just put this up against it. Now. That looks good there. That looks good. This is going to be the uh, width for this part here. Let me put everything all together, roughly. Okay, so this is now ready to be bored for the inside diameter, which is this hole right here. That's coming up. The inside diameter is about 735,000. I'll try to get it close to that as well.
using, that was a half inch drill bit, now I'm using 9 16 end mill. Okay, now the boring bar will clear. When I had it a half inch, the boring bar was touching on the bottom here, so I had to go to 9 16 for the bore. So now I can, now that will actually clear now like it's supposed to. Okay, let's line it up for clearance here. Let's say about right there. Point six three five. I need to go to point seven three five. Spring pass now. I'm about to back out again. About 730. About 730,000. 5,000 to go. Alright. Okay, the internal bore is done. And uh, what I have over here now on this here cog wheel, I noticed something here that I didn't see before. And that is there is some internal boring on the back side here as well. And so I'm going to have to get these here dimensions here. I got one here and then a step up over here. So what I'm going to have to do is take this off my leg, switch it around, chuck it on this side and uh, get all this down flat to here and then begin working inside here to get those bores. That's going to be interesting to see how I'm going to do that. I have to go in. Okay, I see how it's going to be done. All right, that's what I got to do then. That's what I got to do. I got to work on the uh, the back side of this now. So that's what I'm going to work on now. Take this out, chuck it here, take all this here knob off here, and then start doing the back side internal boring. And the reason why this here internal boring on the back side here is because on the wheel itself there is a uh, 
part of the wheel right here that that has to fit over. It actually registers on there like that. It registers on there. And because of that, I have to machine that to fit that there. Okay, I switched the workpiece around. I put tape on the jaws here to protect the finished uh, surface here. And I'm just checking for run out in this direction first. And now checking for the outside dam to run out. Okay. Seven forty. One and a quarter. Bring it up 0.255 now. 100, 200, 55. Okay, that's very close right there. That's pretty much right in where I'm looking for. 1.24, 1.25, so I'm within the range. The depth of cut is a quarter inch. And I have my stop set right there for a quarter inch.
check that now. Okay, let's go. Yet, no less than an eighth of an inch to go yet. Should be pretty close to the last pass here now. A few thousands to go. Maybe a couple of spring passes will take care of that. <clears throat> okay, I'm going to do a couple of spring passes on this. I was just get another little nudge about maybe another half valve. One more. I should, I should get one more. There we want it now. <clears throat> Pretty close to inch and uh, inch and a quarter. That's what I want. Okay, now the next one is about uh, 1.405, and that's pretty well loose on here. You can see that there's a lot of room on there, so that's just a very, very large clearance. This is actually a clearance also. This is about inch and a quarter. And that's got some play there too. You can actually measure that down. It's about an inch and uh, two four. And the plastic is actually is about uh, an inch and a quarter to yeah, around an inch and a quarter. But this larger diameter here inside is a lot larger than the piece here. So that's just clearance. So I'll just make that the same as here, by an inch 400. Okay. 
making sure it's nice. Alrighty. See, that's the flange right there. We had to go over these little bearing points here. And that fits over nice. Alright. Next thing is to start working on either the ring. Do the ring part first and then do the cogs. Or make the fixture for make doing the cogs and the tooling for the cogs. I'm not sure what I'm going to do yet. But right now i got the blank down to the size it needs to be. Okay, that's all for right now. And I'm going to think of the next steps I want to do on this now and how I want to do it. Okay, let, let me see if I can explain what's going on here. I just noticed something that I need to do more on on that there boring in the back side. This sits in here like this flush, like this, so that the edge of this edge here is in line with this edge here. Now, whenever I did my machining on the back side, I took the depth from here down. But when I look at this here, there's something else that's here on this ring. And that is the height of these here feet. Those feet height are included on the thickness of the flange that I have here. So I have to add an extra on here. And when I took a measurement on here, I found it to be around 220 thou. When I took this measurement here from here to here, for the height of the feet, it's roughly around 220 thou or something like that. I'll have to check that again. So what I need to do is I need to add that onto what I have here now to accommodate for that. I'll show you what I mean. Okay, the height of these feet are anywhere from 200 to 210 thousandths of an inch. So I'll go about 210. What I did was I touched off here again. I'll take that forward now into the bore. I'll adjust this here. And I'll adjust this in now 200, 100, 200, 210 thou. I'll make it about 215 because it's going anywhere from 210 to 220 on those there feet. They're, they're plastic feet, so they're within range. Alright, so I'll go within that range there. And I'll set my depth stop now again. And then I'll start doing the boring again on this. Okay, I, I marked off the outer bore here, which is an inch and a quarter, with some black mark there. So whenever I touch on that, I'll know that I'm to the uh, width that I need it. Okay, so let me. Uh, Get up here. And continue the process again. Try to get that stop. And continue on. About 30 thou here. That's a total diameter. And I'm trying to throw it here about 40 thou. That's a total diameter. That's where we wanted that. And now we're down to the full depth that we needed to be now so that we can take make those standoffs on on the on this here rim here. Okay, I'll do the outside boy the same way now. Take it down 220 thousandths from this here reference here and do the same thing again. 
using masking tape on the uh, chuck jaws here worked really well because the workpiece was held in very tightly, very secure, and there is no uh, no marring of the workpiece. Very good holding and very good uh, protection against marring the workpiece. So that's a very good idea of using uh, one piece of little one little piece of tape, masking tape takes care of that. I have to remember that for the next time I do something like that. That works real good. Okay, I'm going to explain here a little bit of what. Uh, what I'm doing here to verify that I got the proper dimensions now in this here. Okay, now to verify that I have everything properly machined here, first of all, I need to look at this and say, okay, this here flange here is the exact same thing as this flange here because this sits inside here flush so that both, of the, both those parts of the flange there are together as one unit. This here is the same as this. With that being the case, I take the workpiece now and I take it from the feet here to the front and that's the same size. That means then that the top of this is the top of this right here. So if I put this against this like this, this should end up to the same height as this. Now, the internal bores. Here's how I can verify that. Since I know that this is the same as this, when I put these both down on the surface plate, they should line up. The bottom of this flange should be line up here, like that. And I looked at that on the bottom here, and I see that it is. I can see that it lines up. Now, the one thing to check now is the depth of the bore. This will verify everything. Okay, are you in camera here? Okay. If I bring this down to the internal bore, I'm looking at 500 and around 70, around 578 thousandths of an inch. If I bring this over, and I drop this down into the internal bore. I'm getting 579 thousandths. Alright. Let me see. Let me zoom in here a little bit. Okay. So I'm taking now the internal bore with both faces down to the surface plate. I'm looking at about 579. And this here comes down about 577, 78. So I know now that they are both registering together and both bores are at the same depth with relation to the surface plate. And that's the good verification right there. So that verifies the accuracy of the machine. It was done properly. All the bores are done properly. I can check the widths, but I also know now that the dimensions for the entire height, including the feet that's going to be accommodated on here, is taken care of as well. So it basically goes like this. Basically it goes like that when it's put together. And they pretty much match up to the same height with each other. The top, the foot here, height this foot, is the height of this. And that's what we're looking for. Okay. That verifies that, and I'm glad for that, so now I can start working on the next part of this project.